sorry about the delay. So I'm going to be doing a new Hopefully series. I'll be uploading every Monday for this series. Um, and it's going to be what not to say to someone who, you know, who has an eating disorder, who self-harms, who is suicidal. If you want me to focus on any one of those, or any, anything regarding like mental health, comment below and I will do that. Um, yeah. So let's get started on this. The first one is, you are too beautiful to hurt yourself. Now self-harm, it doesn't matter if you're beautiful. It does really annoy me because self-harm doesn't discriminate in what you look like or who you are. You could be the most beautiful person on this planet and you can still hurt yourself. It doesn't matter. That's the thing. That's what really annoys me when people say this. They think that you're, you know, you're beautiful so you shouldn't be hurting yourself. It doesn't matter about what you look like. It's what's, it's part of your disease. It's what's going on inside. Number two is promise me that you won't do it again. Now, I know when people say this, they're really trying to care and... Because a lot of the time it's family. Um, you know, my family said it to me. And I get that they're trying to help. But, you know... I could say, yeah, I promise you. Just to get them off my back for asking about it. But then, in a few months, I could do it again. Because of something that's happened. And I'd have just gone back on what I've said to them. And I hate breaking promises, which is why it gets me so wound up even more. And it's probably one of the worst things you can ask somebody who self-harms to do. Because they're trying to promise you, and they could get to a stage in recovery where they're actually feeling like they, they're about to relapse, or they are relapsing, and they feel even worse about it because they've gone back on a promise that they've told you. Number three is those scars will be there for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh my god, this is a big no no. Please don't do it. Um, stating the obvious much, <laughs> it's not like we know that. Of course, we know that. It's like it's so obvious that it annoys me. People who self harm, yes. We know that those scars are going to be there for the rest of your life. Okay, some people are lucky in the fact that their scars fade. Others aren't, like me. <laughs> Mine aren't, so I'm not so lucky in that fact. But I knew when I started that those scars would be there for the rest of my life. But at the time, you don't really care about that. You're just trying to release pain. And it seems like the only way. And then you get to now and you think, Okay, yeah, I wish I hadn't started because I've now got these scars. But when people say those scars are going to be there for the rest of your life, you don't think we already know that. You're stating the obvious so much. I just don't know what else to say on that matter. It's just one of those things where you're stating the obvious to someone who knows it already. And it, it just annoys me big time. Number four. I thought you had stopped. This kind of goes hand in hand with um, promise me you won't do it again. I thought you had stopped. <laughs> yes, they may well have stopped, but then with recovery comes relapse, and that's what's going to happen. They are going to relapse, and it won't just, you won't just stop overnight. It will take a while for somebody to stop, and if they're getting the right help, then they will stop eventually. It t it's taken me three months to stop. I'm now one month clean from self-harm which um, actually today is one month clean, which I'm so proud of myself for. But telling somebody that, you know, I thought you had stopped is only going to make them feel worse about the fact that they have relapsed or they haven't quite stopped yet. And they are probably trying their hardest to stop. And when you say things like that, it doesn't make it easy. Right, the last one, are you suicidal? So because I self-harm, I'm suicidal. Is that what it is? No. Not everybody who self-harms is suicidal. That's not a saying that not everybody who's suicidal self-harms. It goes hand in hand. And I hate that was the one one big thing that I hated was people telling me, oh, because you self-harm, you must be suicidal. That's not what it is. 
self-harm is a way, it's almost like, how do I explain this? It's a way to release the anger and the pain that's inside. You're not trying to kill yourself with self-harm, you're trying to survive. You're trying to live. And it seems like the only way to survive is by hurting yourself. And for anybody who doesn't understand self-harm or doesn't understand that way of thinking, it, it will be a hard thing to kind of understand and grasp. But that's what I found myself. It was like a way of surviving. Um, so yeah, that's all of them for today. I will do next video next Monday. Um, I will hopefully do another video either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, and I'll try and think of some more um, videos. So if there is any videos you'd like me to do, comment below. I will be, um, yeah, I'll be doing more videos so I can get more subscribers and get more people spreading the awareness of mental health, which is what it's all about. So thank you. Oh, and also if you would like me to do any videos in particular, comment below and I will try and do those. Um, I would like to do a QA and a in a couple of weeks, or maybe, maybe I can do that tomorrow or Wednesday. So if you comment questions below, or go to my Facebook page or Twitter, which I will leave, oh, and my Tumblr, I will leave them all below. Alright then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!